Warzone. The lifeblood of Call of Duty as of lately, whether we like that or not, has been the driving force behind the brand and universal cohesion since March of 2020. Warzone's mix of the battle royale genre with the Call of Duty IP propelled it to superstardom fast and early on, breaking records like the most downloads for a BR experience in 24 hours, having crossed 100 million players in a single year and paved the way for the future of Call of Duty moving forward. But while we know Warzone, while we've seen all the accomplishments and milestones that it's hit in the last three years, it wasn't the first and for many, not even the best Battle Royale offering in the Call of Duty franchise. Rewind all the way to nearly two years before the launch of Warzone to May 17th, 2018, the reveal of Black Ops 4's Blackout, the introduction and start of something that would unknowingly change Call of Duty forever, and the start of our conversation that Blackout deserved better. Drop your thoughts as we go along. Did you enjoy Blackout in its prime? Do you think that we should have seen more Blackout? What are the Case, drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, you'll find it at all insightful. Do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, do be sure to hit the subscribe button. Stay updated with all things Call of Duty. And as we gear up towards the coming year for Modern Warfare 2, we'll have more discussions and retrospectives that you may be interested in like this. So if you'd like to join us on the road to half a million subscribers, I'd love to have you. But for now, let's talk about Blackout and the life that it could have had. Blackout launched with Black Ops 4 on October 12th, 2018, and was a secondary, perhaps tertiary offering, depending on who you asked. With the traditional multiplayer experience to grind through, the zombies offering to kind of mega grind through, offering the most zombies content at launch, though the year to follow would be a different story, but with 9, Voyage of Despair, Blood of the Dead, and Classified, the 5 remake for Black Ops Pass owners, there's plenty to do with the game's launch window, independent of that third mode and place of camp. Campaign. However, for those that jumped into Blackout, either for the first time or familiar with the map and mode given the Blackout beta a few weeks earlier, they were probably hooked. And from the very beginning, David Vonderhaar, design director at Treyarch, he said from the very beginning and the reveal that it had to be unique and done in a way that only Black Ops could do. From the very basics like a first-person perspective in the BR market, something that was only slightly toyed around with at the time with the big competitors like H1Z1, that was third person, Fortnite was third person, PUBG had a first-person mode but it wasn't the only only way to play, even from the very viewpoint in which you played, it was trying to offer that Call of Duty formula. But the very aspects of the gameplay that made Call of Duty, Call of Duty, the intent was there to mash up the Call of Duty experience with Battle Royale in the truest of sense for something that would become a gold mine to some. The looting was pure and true to Battle Royale as we knew it then. You drop in, find a weapon, secure some kills, and keep on looting either enemies or ground and chest items. From there, you could end up creating better gunplay scenarios, looting attachments and heavier firepower, but random in the very fundamentals of loot distribution. RNG as Battle Royale is built on. The gunplay featuring the arsenals from Black Ops 4 was Black Ops by design, but to be able to master every single weapon in any given situation, that was something that was integral to the gunplay and design of Blackout. You never knew what weapon you'd end up having to use to win a gunfight and stay alive, but it was key. A sharp contrast to the current Warzone loadout system where maybe you see 1 to 10 of the same weapons in the majority of your gunfights, if that many at all. Perks were in Blackout as well, but in a much different fashion than we may be used to today. Lootable and only available to be kept on your person until use, taking up ever so important inventory spaces and making their carry and uses higher risk and higher reward, offering a skill gap branch in its own right. Would you carry dead silence or let it go? Would you pop that paranoia in a situation where you and your team need to cross a field or save it until late game? Fundamental gameplay decisions that challenge the player further than they may anticipate when simply choosing where to drop early game. Utility items with limited use also offered a twist in its own gameplay right. Things like your grappling hook made for getaways or flank maneuvers to be commonplace, but with only five per grapple loot, you had to make them count or bank more in your inventory slots for more use. The early nine bang as broken as it was gave you that edge that could give you the upper hand in a gunfight. The barricade or razor wire, you could cut off enemy positions and force them to single choke points. All aspects of the game that were situational and ever-changing. No match would be identical to the last ever. But gameplay mechanics aside, it wasn't the only thing that Blackout presented in the Call of Duty fashion for the Battle Royale genre. Blackout's map was another thing that many would consider to be the magnum opus of the Black Ops universe. Mashing together multiple iconic locations from the Black Ops universe like Nuketown, Raid, Asylum, Firing Range, and more as time went along like Buried and Hijacked, as well as introducing other locations that were brand new like Rivertown or Construction. They were all key locations that were beloved during and after the life cycle of the game. But the map was one of the main 
main reasons why you could either thrive or die, depending on who you were as a player. Blackout's main map, lesser known but entitled Eclipse, featured a various number of biomes and elements to traverse, but was simplistic to its core. One of the beautiful things about Blackout's primary map was the ability to have a gunfight nearly on even ground every single time. Although yes, cover and altitude were seen in plenty of locations across the trees, rocks, water, and all the various elevation across construction, the rocky hillsides behind the likes of Estate, Asylum, and Turbine, and the massive lookout points above Fracking Tower and elsewhere, for the most part, the environment was your only cover. There were no overly dense areas with dozens of buildings and 10 plus stories to fight an enemy. If you took fire, you knew relatively right away where that fire was coming from, offering a more simplified gunfight. It was you versus the enemy, and it came down to your gun skill or ability to find cover quick. The area that always comes to my mind is downtown from Verdansk. There was no areas in Blackout's map with 100 plus entry points to worry about when crossing a street. No real areas that had you wonder, okay, well, what floor was that sniper fire coming from or anything like that? Fundamentally, there is nothing wrong with either, it's just a matter of who wanted the complexity or perhaps realism of dense urban combat versus who wanted more simplistic design for gunplay, and I'm sure that opinions will differ on both sides of that coin on which is better, but the point being objective that it was a simpler environment to fight in. Beyond that, in the core gameplay, Blackout offered even more to those that wanted to grind the game. Grinders at the core could be rewarded by the fact that Blackout's ranking and stat tracking systems were all independent of Black Ops 4's mainline multiplayer or zombies ranking systems as well. Blackout was its own independent thing, showing the true grinders from the ones that maybe jumped on when MP wasn't so great. Granted, the prestige system took a little bit of time to be implemented, and plenty of players were stuck at that max level for a long while, but it was a system that let grinders get a bit more out of climbing the ranks. In addition, for that, for those that like earning items, something that was unfortunately not too commonplace in Black Ops 4, given the supply drop system, was that Blackout introduced quest lines to unlock characters by doing in-game missions that for some were incredibly hard. I remember that some of them were so hard even that the requirements were changed to make them more accessible. While Warzone features some easter eggs here and there, some better than others, that was a component that was never really brought over in its entirety to the battle royale experience that we currently have. So, all of this sounds great if you've never played Blackout or if we're just fondly remembering it, right? So what constitutes it deserving better? Well, from the very beginning, Blackout had plenty of hurdles in the way. Before the reveal, even the game was in a turmoil development. For those unaware, Black Ops 4 never had a traditional campaign. There was a career mode planned, which we may revisit here on the channel shortly because that's kind of a fascinating thing to learn about in and of itself, but Blackout in turn replaced that career mode when it was cut. The entire mode then being created from the ground up in only nine months. When you think about a full game like Black Ops Cold War or Vanguard that have had developmental turmoils reported on and are apparent in some aspects as well, having shortened timeframes for development, a lot of those developments come down to like a year and a half, two years sometimes to work out and rebuild everything. So while Blackout wasn't a full game offering, the sheer enormity of the project, building out working functions for flight, gliding, looting, zone pushes, and all that on the biggest world that Call of Duty had ever seen to date, that was an impressive undertaking. I remember reports from insiders with sources on the dev team stating that it was a miracle the game worked at launch, let alone for the beta a few weeks earlier than the game's launch. However, that wasn't all. Even though the mode was crafted and shipped in such a short period of time, it still had an uphill battle of upkeep, something that was debatably handled depending on who you ask. However, for the nature of the discussion, content aside, the game objectively was met with another uphill battle in regards to that upkeep, memory limitations on systems at hand. At the time, Black Ops 4 was on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, and the sheer enormity of the project that was Blackout in a game that already included a full-fledged multiplayer offering and Zombies offering, that pushed the game to the memory limits and is a huge reason why we didn't see more post-launch content and sort of map evolution. Honestly, considering how close they cut it, I'm kind of surprised that we even had Alcatraz in the offering as well. Blackout's map eventually got updated to include Hijacked as a new point of interest and later on Buried, correct? But after that, we didn't see any more new points of interest introduced. We saw some adjustments to existing locations, but other than that, not really. And memory limitations are entirely to blame for that. So much so to the point that from what I've heard, do you remember when Operation Apocalypse Z came into Blackout and changed the entire map to that foggy aesthetic? If you remember that point, one of the things you may remember is that buildings during that event didn't have windows. Memory was so tight for Blackout at points during the year that glass on windows is what pushed the game over and would have broken the build. The battles were certainly uphill. 
However, I think Blackout's shortcomings and why it deserved more was just simply coming down to the lack of awareness of how big it could become. I've constantly said it, and I'll say it for as long as I can foresee, Blackout walked so that Warzone could run. And that's for better or for worse, depending on who you ask. I know plenty of people who love Warzone way more and plenty who love Blackout way more. And then there's that camp like me that I can recognize that both introduced some great stuff to the franchise and the battle royale genre. As we'll discuss with a few things in a few moments, I think that Warzone introduced a great number of things that I didn't even know I wanted back when Blackout was the primary experience. However, I truly do believe that the game's shortcomings stem from simply a sheer exploratory manner from the Call of Duty IP in the battle royale genre. Had history gone differently, had Warzone launched as an additional mode to the Modern Warfare 2019 offering like it was initially planned to be, with zero later thought of making it a standalone a free-to-play offering, and that Black Ops 4 would have launched after Modern Warfare, I truly think that we could be playing Blackout for free today as opposed to Warzone. Blackout simply set that framework and paved the road for how Battle Royale could work in Call of Duty and was truly just a product of the right place, wrong time cliche. Blackout did a lot of good for the expansion of the Call of Duty offering. A Battle Royale experience, the arcade shooter, true feel, grind-worthy gameplay and extracurriculars and so on, but it was those good things that indicated to Activision that, okay, maybe we should double down on this. And being that first offering in the line of development may have been the ultimate sort of downfall for why it didn't get more. Warzone built built on the backing and foundation that Blackout had laid and ran with it. Free to play was a product of the sheer interest in the genre and Call of Duty's take on it. That $60 barrier of entry is enough to slow down anyone's interest in the game, no matter how cool it looks. My whole thing, and I'm sure plenty of other people are like this, is that don't pre-order games until you play it. And while there was a beta for Blackout in September of 2018, I'm sure that just as many, if not way more, had probably missed that. So who knows how many people would be picking up Blackout if they had the opportunity to play it and not spend any cash to try it out for the very first time. I mean, could you imagine if Blackout went free to play, how big that could potentially be? How many people love the Black Ops universe? How many people love the feel of the more arcadey vibe of Black Ops? It was predicted by industry analysts during the main year of support, but that never ultimately happened where it went free to play. Could you imagine if it also had crossplay as well? I mean, Blackout was such a great experience and fun experience, but even on PC, if you tried to play it just a month or two after in November or December of 2018, you'd be very hard pressed to find a game, let alone now it's impossible four years later on PC. Things like cross progression were again something that just were introduced a little too late and Blackout never ended up having the ability for. But then when we take a look at other things that were expanded upon, like your buybacks and gulags, that to me is probably one of the biggest things with Blackout whenever we were playing that I never really thought that I would ever need or knew that I would want but the ability to just come back into the game. Instead, if you die early on, you're stuck spectating your teammates for 10, 15, 20 minutes at a time. So to be able to buy your teammates back or have the ability to fight back for yourself, to gain entry to that game again was something that made that replayability something much more. It offers a unique twist on the Battle Royale experience that we didn't see up until that point. And of course, outside of the memory issues and things like that, if the game would have had continued support, map evolution, multiple maps introduced, adding to that longevity, I definitely think that Blackout could have been so much more. So while it may not be everyone's cup of tea or you may prefer one or the other, I've been thinking about it a lot lately and I think that it always comes back to it and I think that I'll be firm in my belief that Blackout deserved better. It was such a fun experience, such a fundamental shift for what Call of Duty had tried before and being presented in a less serious manner than what Warzone presents itself as, it was something that truly could have been something phenomenal. From more time to bake in the nine months of development that it had to the potential that it had to expand upon the existing Black Ops universe and do the things that we now see common in the industry and that Warzone even did, I do think that Blackout deserved better. It could have had such a great life, could have had such a great content support offering and multi-year support, but who knows? Again, maybe if that timeline had gone a little bit differently, maybe we'd be playing Blackout today, years later after its launch, rather than Warzone. So that's where we're going to leave it. That's where we're going to wrap it up. Just wanted to have a casual conversation and stroll down memory lane. So wrapping things up, let me know your thoughts. Would you have liked to see Blackout live on? Are you happy that we jumped to Warzone when we did? Over to the case, drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, you just enjoyed it at all, do me a favor and drop a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Call of Duty. Of course, Modern Warfare 2 is upcoming here later these next couple of months and into later this year. But for the time being, we got a lot of time to kill still, so we'll probably be doing some more retrospective content like this. If you enjoy any of that, I'd love to have you in the community. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.